What's up everyone? So Old marks the 13th M. Night Shyamalan film to be released. So I figured today I would sit down and rank all 13 of his movies from worst to best. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe and leave a comment down below. If you've seen all of his, all of his, all of his movies, uh, share your ranking down in the comment section or just share your ranking of the handful of movies of his you have seen. Also, real quick, um, I want to say he does have another movie that I'm not including on this list. It seems most people only rank from wide awake all the way up to old. Um, he does have one or two movies prior to that, but it seemed like most people were just doing those, so I just went for those movies. So I hope that's alright. Um, anyways... Anyways, let's get right into the ranking. And first, I just want to say that I think M. Night Shyamalan is a great director. I will kind of crap on a few of his movies here at the bottom of the list, but I do think he's a great director. I really appreciate his bold and original ideas. And in an age where we're constantly getting sequels we don't want and reboots and remakes and stuff like that, he's, his commitment to like original films is I've always appreciated. And I really enjoy his films as a director. He doesn't always you know, knock it out of the park with his movies, but... I really appreciate his ideas and his big ideas and how he tries to really blow the audience away with every single one of his movies. I've always appreciated that about him. Um, but anyways, let's get right into the ranking. So coming in, in 13th place for me, and pretty easily, this was going to be the last Airbender from 2010. This movie is just really all kinds of bad. It, it takes a TV show that I love, my personal favorite television show of all time, and, and Avatar The Last Airbender. And this is just a flat and boring adaptation of that show. The acting is really bad. The cast is really bad. But I don't want to get too into that. Um, it's just the plot of this movie is a very smushed version of the 20 plus episode season of Avatar The Last Airbender Season 1. When they should have just completely made their own plot loosely based off of Season 1. Instead they just smushed the entire eventful season. It's not like there's a lot of filler in Avatar or anything. Uh, it's just a very bland and forgettable adaptation of a show that I love so much. And honestly, it's pretty disrespectful to the original show. And just really doesn't represent what was great about the show. Even like the bending in the show, which the bending is one of the coolest parts about the show. The bending in this movie is very uninteresting and very bland. There's just no excitement to be found in this film. And in my opinion, it's just a really bad and weak film. Um, and anyways, it easily comes in at number 13. So number 12 is going to be Lady in the Water. Only a little step above Avatar The Last Airbender. But for me, this movie's not disrespectful at all. It doesn't take a show I love and completely ruin it. Um, so this movie doesn't have that holding it back. But I do think this is a very bizarre concept from M. Night Shyamalan that really just does not work and does not get remotely fully realized. Um, I think this is a case where too much creative freedom can be an issue. Because someone has to step in here and just say, you know, this concept is not working. Um, and throughout the movie, he's just pushing this kind of like weird fairy tale dream, dream kind of concept that he has um, with um, Bryce Dallas Howard's character um, and what she's doing. It's just, it's not working throughout the entire film. I'm never interested in it. And on top of that, this movie's really boring. It's just filled with kind of bland acting from a number of characters in the movie. Well, I do like Paul Giamatti in the movie, he is pretty good. But other than that, there's all the other performances are forgettable at the best. Um, and overall, this is a very bland M. Night Shyamalan film. I don't think it's a complete disaster. I just think it's a very bizarre concept he goes for that just doesn't work. Um, and it ends up making a pretty bad movie. And then so coming in at number 11 is going to be After Earth. I think After Earth is a huge step up from those previous two films. It's not a good movie, but I do think it's a significant um, tier above Last Airbender and Lady in the Water. As it's really kind of a harmless sci-fi film. You just follow Jaden Smith and Will Smith as they go to this um, After Earth, I guess is what you call it, in Way in the Future. And they have to try to survive and... And, um, and Jaden Smith has to try to save his dad. But it's really just that. There isn't much to the story. The sci-fi elements in this movie aren't very intriguing. They come off as very cheap and very just forgettable and bland. Um, it just really doesn't feel like a lot of work. They want they wanted to put a lot of work into this movie to really develop it and really flesh it out. It's just a very simple story of Jaden Smith trying to save his dad. Trying to go to some like destination to get like their... To get like the recon thing or something like that. Um, and it's... It's only that, and that's really unfortunate. Um, I do have some fun with this movie. I do enjoy Jaden Smith in the movie. I think he is a decent actor when he has acted. Um, Will Smith's fun, and it's not it, its not shrouded in just terrible acting and terrible dialogue and being boring that the first two movies are. Um, it is watchable. I just I don't think this movie is intriguing. I don't think it's interesting. Um, and honestly, when you start it, you're just waiting for the movie to end. Um, anyway, so that comes in at number 11. 
So coming at number 10 for me is going to be The Happening from 2008. This movie is the definition of a movie that is so bad it's good. The acting in this movie is really, really bad, but it makes the movie so enjoyable. I'm just watching Mark Wahlberg and Zoe Duchanel's um, really, like, really dreadful acting in this film. Um, it's really funny to watch, and like, um, I, I'll go on YouTube and re-watch a lot of the... Uh, the worst scenes in this movie because it's so much fun to just watch them um, and on top of that this movie's premise with like the kind of nature the sh killing humans off it's interesting but it's not like remotely fully realized by M. Night Shyamalan here and he doesn't do it that well um it's just it doesn't work you're not scared of what's happening you don't you don't have this kind of impending doom vibe that i think he was going for it's just you really just watching people you know, they get affected by the wind and then they kill themselves and that's really the that's it it's not it's you're never scared for the characters you don't care about the characters the dialogue is very 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 weak and overall this is quality wise is one of M. Night Shyamalan's worst films though I do think it's above the bottom three because it is just it's a lot of fun and it's a very harmless movie it's 90 minutes it's very easy to watch it's very easy to follow what's happening um just like you're not interested necessarily in the plot itself more around the acting and the the dialogue and having a good time with that so anyways it's a very harmless film um, it's fun it's fun to watch but it is technically on a technical scale a really bad movie anyways that comes happening comes in at number 10. So coming out at number nine is gonna be Wide Awake from 1998, the his earliest film on this list. Um, this is a very weird family movie as it follows just this kid um, as he's trying to really find his relationship with God. And this movie has a lot of religious themes, a lot of religious undertones that I think kind of work in the movie. It's just they're not really fully realized, they're not developed enough to actually make it an emotional movie, an emotional experience. It's just a very like kind of forgettable family film if it wasn't directed by M. Night Shyamalan this would be the kind of movie nobody would talk about um it's just there's not much to this movie it's just really a kid trying to find a relationship with God and all the kind of hijinks he gets into at his um church school and kind of that and it has a few kind of undertones about um God and church and stuff like that um and it's like it's it's an enjoyable movie it's not terrible it's easy enough to watch um and it's very fine on a technical scale just you know not a very interesting movie so coming at number eight is gonna be The Village. I know a lot of people do like this movie, but for me, I just could not get behind it. Um, I do kind of enjoy the first part of the movie where you know they're in this kind of isolated village and you got all like, really all the drama within this village where there's like the surrounded and there's like, a beast in the woods that's like hunting them. I do enjoy that part of the movie a little bit. It's not great, but it is enjoyable enough. But the whole movie, you feel like it's leading somewhere. And then when you finally get that reveal twist at the end, it for me completely ruined the movie. Um, it just, it takes a semi-interesting movie and just completely throws everything out of the water. Everything that happened in this movie is completely meaningless. Um, it's a very unoriginal twist. It's a very almost predictable twist as well i mean it's just it, it's not satisfying the whole movie just is built to set up a twist that was supposed to blow you away but it doesn't it's just not a good twist in my opinion it's the exact opposite of the sixth sense um i just for me to twist ruin this movie but aside from that it's just not a very interesting movie like on a technical scale once again the acting's fine the dialogue is fine there's nothing like dreadful about this movie aside from the twist at the end but it's just like it's not a very good movie in my opinion it's very mediocre kind of like a two and a half three star kind of film kind of right there in that middle range anyways the village comes in at number eight so coming in at number seven is going to be M. Night Shyamalan's newest film, Old, from 2021. This movie isn't perfect, but I think it's a lot of fun. I really enjoyed the premise of people just getting old on a beach and kind of the the chaos that ensues from there and kind of how M. Night Shyamalan's able to be creative with what happens to these characters and the different things they go through and different how different characters are going to react and how different age groups and different people with different medical conditions are going to react to aging really quickly. I think it's pretty creative and it's a very enjoyable film. It doesn't run too long. It's, the runtime flies by. It's very easy to watch. Um, and it's, I think this movie is a lot of fun. I had a really good time in the theater with it. I, I do get that there is really some terrible acting in this movie um, and especially the dialogue in this movie is really bad like the characters especially when like big things are happening they just say things that don't make sense at all that no one would ever say on um, very kind of a very a very weak script from M. Night Shyamalan but nonetheless I, I really had a good time in this movie it's definitely in the middle range of M. Night Shyamalan movies um, but anyway Old comes in at number seven so coming in at number six is gonna be Glass from 2019. We're kind of now we're kind of getting into movies that I actually really enjoy. Um, Glass is a very mixed movie. I do think 
the opening premise of this movie, the main premise throughout the film is really good. I do enjoy that it took these three characters from Unbreakable and Split and it kind of put them in a mental hospital and most of the movie we're just kind of exploring these characters as we get more character development from all three of these characters and we learn more about them. And I think, I think that's a really good idea from M. Night Shyamalan as he just these characters are, are really good um, and they're very intriguing and they make a very en entertaining movie and he really puts that to work in this movie and I think that works really well. I do think this movie is a little boring and it definitely runs too long but then my main issue with the movie is the ending just ruins it. There's no plot twist or anything but just what he does to some certain characters at the end uh, really ruins this movie and really ruins this movie's potential of really being a successful sequel to Split into Unbreakable. Um, I, just, I really did not like the ending of the movie. Other than that, outside of the ending, it's not a terrible film. It's really a very enjoyable kind of psychological exploration of these three characters. Um, and it really makes you question what's happening, but then the ending really undoes everything that happens throughout the entire film. Um, so that's kind of unfortunate, but I do enjoy Glass. It is definitely a good, a good enough movie in my opinion. So coming at number 5 is probably going to be the biggest surprise from M. Night Shyamalan and that's going to be The Visit. This found footage film of kids going to their grandparents house that completely turns into chaos. I really had a good time with this movie as just a small short horror film that's really fun but also really really creepy. Um, it's a very enjoyable film um, with you know fine acting, good dialogue and just a very interesting plot um, as you really don't know what's happening and then you get this twist about two thirds through the movie that just will completely blow you away um, not, and as well just make you absolutely terrified. Um, it's such a it's probably my second favorite M. Night Shyamalan twist um, and it's just it's so good. I really enjoy, really had a good time with this movie. It's, there's a lot of funny moments. I don't know if they're supposed to be intentional, like the kid getting a diaper put in his face. Um, but it's it's a very it's a very good movie. There's a lot of jump scares in here. It's a very I thought I thought it was a very good horror movie. And the visit comes in here at number five. So coming in at number four is going to be Unbreakable. Now we're getting into that top tier of M. Night Shyamalan movies. Unbreakable is a very good movie. Very good cast with Bruce Willis and Samuel L. Jackson who really do a good job in this movie with their, their their characters are really interesting. I really love the premise around Bruce Willis's character kind of being this superhero in society. Um, it's a very different take on superhero films. It's obviously kind of before superhero films became the mainstay in cinema. Um, and I really enjoyed his character in this film and I like how he really got fully realized throughout the film. And it's really an origin story for, my, for a character. Um, and it's just, it's a very enjoyable film. It flows very nicely. It doesn't overstay its welcome. I um, mean, I really enjoy it. The ending is, I do like the ending and the ending twist and everything. Um, I do wish the ending was a little longer. That's, I've always had this issue with this movie is I wish the ending, um, they flesh the ending out a little more and I'll always be disappointed that there's not a sequel to this movie. I really think an immediate sequel like the year after would have been perfect for this movie um, as it sets up this character but we never get anything after until Glass. Um, but nonetheless Unbreakable is a really good movie. I get why people love it so much but for me it comes in at number four. So uh, coming at number three for me is going to be Signs from 2002, M. Night Shyamalan's really fun throwback alien invasion movie that focuses on this religious family and how they're dealing with this alien invasion there's a lot of amazing religious undertones in this movie that make it that make it very enjoyable whether or not you're religious they're very um they're, they're very impactful in this movie as you see how these characters question their faith throughout the film um it's very i really like that stuff in this movie i think the cinematography in this movie is really good that scene where it shows the alien walking through the streets is a phenomenal shot um very simple but very good um, and the movie, the plot itself is just very enjoyable. You really get, in, you can really get um, invested in the story as you see these aliens invading. You don't really know what's happening, and as the plot slowly unfolds, you feel like you're right there with this family. I'm um, kind of dealing with what's happening on the news. It feels like a very realistic take on the alien invasion. Um, you wouldn't really know what's happening. You'd be really scared, but you'd have kind of this like cautious scared because you really do not know what's going to happen. And I really think M. Night Shyamalan executes that here. On top of that, the cast in this movie is really good. Mel Gibson, Joaquin Phoenix um, are very good in this movie. And it's just a very... I would, say it's, I would say it's fun, but it's also just a very interesting and intriguing film um, that really studies alien invasion in almost a new lens. Um, anyways, Signs is a really good movie, and it comes in here at number three. So coming at number two is probably going to be M. Night Shyamalan's craziest film, and that's going to be Split. I have grown in love to love this movie with my recent rewatch. Um, originally, it was a little bit lower on the list, but with my rewatch, this movie just skyrocketed up on my ranking. Um, I love James McAvoy in this movie as this character with the Split personality. It's done perfectly by M. Night Shyamalan. You really 
do get enough of his personalities to really make it feel effective in this movie and you it's a really good exploration of his character in this movie and on top of that this is a great kind of horror thriller movie that's really intense and you really are on the edge of your seat the whole time and you really don't know what's happening and it's really almost a slow burn as it just gets crazier as the movie goes on as uh, James McAvoy's character kind of is losing his mind as he's kind of trying to summon the beast. Um, it's a very interesting movie with a lot of effective twists and turns in the plot that really keep you on the edge of your seat the entire time. And it's just a very good exploration of James McAvoy's character. I think M. Night Shyamalan absolutely killed it with this movie and taking this hard premise that could be difficult to adapt to a film and taking the screenplay that would be difficult to adapt and just knocking it out of the park with this movie. I really love Split. It's gotten better with each watch, each rewatch I've had, and it comes in here at number two. So coming in at number one, and there was absolutely no question what it was going to be. It's going to be The Sixth Sense from 1999, M. Shim, M. Night Shyamalan's kind of breakout film starring Bruce Willis and Haley Joel Osment as they kind of, as we kind of get a dual therapy lessons between them as they, as Bruce Willis's character is trying to help him. Meanwhile, Haley Joel Osment's character in a way is helping Bruce Willis deal with deal with the events in his life and it is just such a good film and an amazing exploration of the kind of therapy and psychological stuff and you know stuff like that um, the acting in this movie is amazing I love both characters you get super invested in both characters you're really rooting for Haley Joel Osment's character to get fixed by the end of the movie and feel better you really feel sorry for him you feel sorry for his mother it's a really kind of unfortunate situation for these characters and really rooting for them Bruce Willis is very likable in this movie he really pulls off he really has a good performance in this movie um and it's just a very emotional film and it's a film where the ending of this movie will absolutely make you cry but it'll also completely blow your mind if you don't know the ending i don't want to spoil it because it's probably one of my favorite endings in any movie ever um it's literally like the best plot twist in movies i would say it's absolutely my favorite um nothing comes close to it but it's just a very good emotional movie that will make you feel happy it'll make you feel really sad um and it's just a very effective movie you know, a phenomenal experience my first watch this movie completely blew me away I, it was like my favorite movie for like a little while um and then i re immediately rewatched it and loved it just as much um and it's definitely it's one probably one of my favorite movies of all time it's just you know it's a pretty short film it's kind of small scale but it's really enjoyable and really effective in how it treats this concept of this kid who can see dead people um and you know bruce willis helping him with that it's such a good movie i um, I love this movie to death. It's endlessly rewatchable. I don't agree that it's not as good on a rewatch. I think it's almost better on a rewatch because you can see the kind of the clues M. Night Shyamalan gives you. Um, but anyways, Sixth Sense for me easily comes at number one. I think it's a near perfect movie. I absolutely love this film. It's To me, it's easily his best. Um, and like I said, it comes in at number one. Anyways, that's going to do it for my ranking of all 13 M. Night Shyamalan films or all 13 kind of main M. Night Shyamalan films. I think he does have another film that's not on this list. Um, but anyways, as always, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe and leave a comment down below. Leave your ranking of the M. Night Shyamalan movies. I'm definitely interested to see how different people are going to rank them. I imagine most rankings should be similar to mine with you know, a few movies flip-flopping. Um, but anyways, as always, thank you so much for watching. If you stuck around to the end of the video and have a great day.